Hello? Hey, how are ya? Alright, cool. Alright, you're coming through. Wow. Nice. Uh, well, welcome. Uh, Good. How about you introduce yourself, tell Thanks. us where you're from, uh, and what part of the band you're in. Yeah, cool. Uh, my name's Jake Turner. I, I am from Australia. Um, and I am the lead singer, songwriter, and guitarist. <laughs> so, when did this project, Two Oceans Pass, start? <clears throat> okay, so this has been an ongoing thing for me for, for probably two years. Now, what I started doing, I started writing songs, just writing and practicing recording, and I didn't know how to do either of them. So, I, uh, I got really into it and would just write all day, every day. You pretty much taught yourself in that aspect. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Just uh, courses online and YouTube videos and stuff. I went to town on it, man, like crazy. And uh, yeah, so I I came out with, with these these sort of five, six songs. Um, eventually, I came out with obviously a hundred other songs before that that were mm -hmm. terrible. So I, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I ended up with the EP and um, yeah, man, it, it, it all came together and then and obviously, the boys got on board. Uh, the drummer Ryan and 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 my brother, the bassist um, Hayden. Yeah, we all sort of just got together and went. Yeah, we need to make these songs. So you pretty much wrote all these songs before the band actually formed. Correct. Yeah, yeah. This this was my little project of I've always played music, but I've never sort of taken it's it seriously. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 for sure. What interests me uh, was your band name, Two Oceans Pass. Uh, what uh, inspired you to make that name, or where did it come from? Yeah, for sure. Um, so me, well, Ryan and myself, we were we were talking after the EP was made, and we were going, okay, we like this. What sort of band names do we like? We sort of like that sort of creative. Um, I, I guess it was. Uh, I don't know, it came from, we were writing lyrics and stuff and we wrote about um, oceans and, and how the two oceans pass but never meet and become one sort of thing and, and we were like, okay, that's sort of, it's sort of cool as, as yeah, yeah, it sounds cool. So we just went with it. <laughs> we just rolled. So I'm just curious because now I learned that you wrote music prior and getting all these hundreds of like songs that, you know, didn't make it on the CP. Did, was it always... Uh, that specific genre, that alternative rock genre that you're aiming for? I'll tell you what it was. It was uh, it was me experimenting a lot. It was I experimented so much with the different genres and I started with I guess quite heavy stuff actually. I was into um, I was listening to I think it was Bring Me the Horizon Sempaternal and I started actually just like going to town on mm -hmm. sort of heavy riffs and everything. I was like, okay, cool. Like, I'd played guitars for 10 years, so I, I could play guitar and everything. And I was sweet with that. It was just that I'd never sort of composed a whole sort of everything together and, and made it into something bigger, you know. And so I, I, I started writing heavier guitar riffs and everything. And then I started sort of experimenting with more pop music and, and seeing if I could do that. And, and, and eventually, I just sort of put everything together, together. and it turned into what it did. Yeah. So did it? feel really difficult for you to do this or did it just come naturally over time it, it all came together pretty naturally I, I, it was hard work it wasn't just like oh okay oh, this done. is all together like, yeah yeah to make the whole ep work together was uh you know finding the right keys and and building the songs and rewriting and rewriting and 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 for anyone listening that's writing songs rewriting is writing like mm -hmm. you write the song get it done then rewrite 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 until it's perfect so let's talk about the ep now uh, sure. so i just randomly stumbled upon this piece of work online i was like okay let me give this band a chance really surprised <laughs> really cool um way thought was interesting about uh you guys was the fact that you were kind of you know, to alternative rock from Australia because, like, all you see now from Australia is that you know heavy architects type metalcore that type of style. Yeah. So, so that sense, it kind of makes you kind of stick out. But what do you think also makes you kind of stick out from the rest? Yeah, for sure. So, 
I, look, I've got to say, there, there are other alternative sort of rock bands or um, sort of even ones pushing like post-hardcore and stuff mm. all, all in, in Australia and Melbourne and they're great, but they are. Uh, I guess what happens is a lot of bands don't hone their craft a lot. Like I tried to do this before we mm. started the band, you know, before I put it all together and before I was ready to put it out, like I sat on this for a few months before I was mm. even ready to show anyone because I was like, is it ready? You know, is this yeah. what I want to do? Is it is it better than everyone else around us that that uh, can we stand out in our sort of field? So, I guess what makes us stand out in, in, is the the fact that we sort of is the passion and the the input. You know, a lot of bands will write ten songs and put out an mm. album. I wrote a hundred and something songs and put out a five song EP. You know, it's like it, it's sort of making sure you put in the hard work before you actually do. Mm put yourself out there yeah so i believe that's totally true putting in the hard work to get the final project you hear that like definitely from a couple of other local bands in the states and they kind of have the same type of answer they put out like 30 or something songs like oh yeah we wrote like 30 songs so we only picked like five out of you know the total and it's yeah. kind of like crazy how much you can write, but it doesn't come to the final project because it doesn't kind of like fit together. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It it uh, it it took a while. Like I didn't that interlude bit that that ties Monster and where I want to be together. Like that that was totally. It was always planned to be there. It was just I had to wait until something mm. came that actually tied the two songs together and 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 had the impact that I wanted. So, so what were some kind of background uh t- background to some songs on the album whether wh- what's it about or how it was made yeah yeah okay so <laughs> all right i i used to write songs a few years ago just as a kid or as a kid uh <laughs> in my early 20s i used to write a lot of songs and um just just mucking around uh, and I, I, a few bands approached me and said, hey, can you write for us and stuff? So it's not like I started from scratch for this. I, I had written previously, just never taken it seriously. So I um, say like Drown, Drown is, as although it's sung about a, a girl metaphorically, the, mm. the girl is actually my muse and where I draw my creative side of me in that song. So um, it's all about just that fighting with, with you know, I, can't, I, I got in this slump where I couldn't write mm. songs and it was just killing me because I was like I love that creative out, outlet you know and um, yeah so Drown was completely about just something's wrong with my head I just can't for some reason I can't drive and why Why is this side of me fighting this side of me like why can't they do we just always work you know and so Drown that's that's a really metaphorical song but um, it's super deep for me and, and I'm sure if you listen to recording it's like sad in my voice like because i'm so was so sad about it at the time and um yeah and i mean like monster is about passion and how much i want it you know how much i want to do this and and um you know it's like i dream of flames surrounding me and all this stuff like i just i want it so bad and it's just i've never done anything about it and so now it's time to do something about it which was also like it ties in with um with the fact that yeah now I'm starting to take it seriously and um yeah it, it it's totally uh, the whole EP is sort of about my passion and and getting it out yeah. there yeah for sure so uh, what I thought was interesting too you messaged me this you recorded this whole EP in your bedroom yeah yes <laughs> so yeah so yeah sure so. You know, like most bands, well, I guess here in the States, they usually go to a studio, but was it hard to pretty much produce mix all by yourself? It took me a year of, of really studying that side of things. I'd never, re- I'd recorded just some like put up a mic and record acoustic guitar and singing at the same time sort of thing, but I'd never got into recording. So what did I do? I went out and bought a heap of gear and just went okay what's the minimum i need to get the maximum quality for the least amount of cost like so i ended up spending about 10 grand on gear unfortunately but i had to to just get that professional mm-hmm. sound and in my bedroom and and that's yeah i just went to town on it just by myself all day every day recording 
working on guitar tones for a week straight, 12 hour days, you know, working on, I just was doing it, you know, so the drums was super hard to do myself, mm. but, um, yeah, eventually I just but it got ended it all up coming up really well. Yeah. Yeah. To, to make it sound like it, I mean, in my previous band, we paid, I think it was three grand to record one single, Jeez. right? And, uh, <laughs> yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't right. worth it. The song wasn't even very good. Right. And, and so I was just like, okay, we did that in my last band. If I just spend that money on gear, I can then record for free for the rest of the time. Hmm. That is, is is the same quality. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to learn it. And, and that's what I did. And all of this hard work became uh, worth it because now, you know, you're getting radio play. You just uh, last night got airtime on Triple J, which is Australia's biggest radio. Uh, yeah, yeah. Incredible, right? Incredible. Especially sitting here listening to my song that I recorded in my bedroom. <laughs> played played with all these songs from these massive artists mm. and and it just it's it's it stood up. It was just there, you know, and I was like, This sounds great. I love it. So what are some plans to pretty much keep marking your band and show yourself to the rest of the world? Yeah, so I don't know if you've noticed, but our social media has been pretty quiet. Um, <clears throat> we, I tell you what, that side of things, I'm still sort of learning, but I'm, mm-hmm. I'm kind of got my head around uh, now, and we'll start posting a more, lot more updates and what we're doing and, and videos and stuff. We um, we went, we just last night while we were on the radio, we were actually planning out at the same time our social media strategy and everything, and it's 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 hard, but it's a crucial sort of part of it like keeping people informed on what you're doing otherwise you just sort of disappear so i mean we've been writing every day we've been recording new tracks and demos and stuff trying to get the next release done and we've planned out two video clips and Mm. we're you know we we are going to town on it it's just um we're just hard workers yeah we're hard workers behind the scenes it's very hard to do all that then plus document everything and show everyone and and not get lost on that side of things. So. Is there plans yeah. for like merch, physicals of for the EP for the band? Uh, okay. So with merch, we've got a guy designing our merch at the moment. We um we've had a few designs so far that we just again I just I need it to be right. You know, Perfect. It's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need it to be something that I would sort of wear or I would buy myself. And and if I go, oh, I'd probably see that at a gig and pass. Mm. Then I'm not. I'm not doing it. So, yeah, it's um, it's 100% a sort of business for us rather than a band. We really want to make and it that's grow. kind of a correct answer because music scene today being so condensed and so many different artists, it becomes pretty much a business. 100%. And, and, and we need to support ourselves somehow. We can't work full-time and put our, all our money into the band and, and, and just watch it disappear. And, and you know, it, it needs to be something that we can sort of grow and, and make, you know, bring everyone in on rather than just trying to be us and just trying to push through everyone, you know. Is there plans for you guys to start playing shows to tour around Australia? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. We we uh we're getting our live show together at the moment because it's been me, the drummer Ryan, and my brother Hayden on the bass. It's um, it's been a three piece. So mm-hmm. we have played a show before. We had just two guitarists come in, and I just jumped around as a front man, <laughs> and it was really good fun. But they they weren't the sort of permanent member types. Um, we really need like hardworking people, so mm. we are still trying to get a full lineup. We've had so many people sort of ask us about it and stuff, and and we sort of again sort of picky on who we bring into a business. You know, it's yeah, like yeah. if they're not going to bring value to the business, we can't do it. So and you gotta worry it- about if pretty much you work uh, like musically, you kind of organic organically like mixed together. Yeah, it it is a part of it it's just i guess more our headspace and our hard work and and everything i don't want someone to come in and just jump on the train and get pulled along for the ride mm. i want them to go yeah let's make this train faster you know let's push this thing to its limits and and that's that's the sort of headspace i want there's a lot of people out there that can play play power chords on guitar it's just uh, I, I need someone that can think the right way and so um <clears throat> yeah we we have we've got a guy in melbourne learning the songs and um 
and he's he's sort of already got onto designing our merch for us and like doing all this stuff for us. So we're like, okay, cool. You might be the right guy. So we'll just we'll go from here and see what happens. But yeah. Well, I want to thank you for coming on air. We might have to end. <laughs> so I know you had to wake up super early. I think it was like six forty <laughs> something up in Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, before we and uh, Skype, uh, where can people find you on social media to keep up to date with the band? Yeah, cool. So it's everything Two Oceans Pass. So our website, twooceanspass.com, and you can find all our updates on there. We've got, um, obviously, Facebook. We've got Snapchat. We've got, we've got everything. So we, we'll, get, <laughs> we'll go to town on that stuff soon. All right. Well, good luck for you guys in the future. Can't wait to hear more stuff. Have a nice Thanks day. for having me. Cheers, man. Bye.